the conversion between AI and blockchain is like fraught with just a lot of a lot of random stuff, like a lot of narrative, a lot of things that I think have, have a lot of excitement but don't quite have as much of the substance. Um, I will try my best. Hi everyone, coming in live from Token 2049 Singapore. You're watching Voice of Crypto, and I have with us a really interesting guest. We have Jeff Fang from Say Networks. Hi Jeff, it's a pleasure to be interviewing you today. How are you doing? Oh, thank thank you for taking the time for me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you've been in the blockchain space for quite some time, I'm guessing. How do you envision blockchain space sort of changing in the next five years? And uh, what do you think will be the key drivers behind mass adoption of blockchain technology? Yeah, man, that's a that's a big one to start with. <laughs> we can divide it in parts. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I've been sprinting around for a good chunk of uh, I said the conference so far, and playing a bit more, almost like um, like hot lava. Like yeah. not spend as little time outside in the heat as possible. I know. Um, I'd say the to answer to answer your question, um, the easiest place to start is probably the core vision and where I've dedicated a big chunk of my life uh, yeah. to building. Um, so we work in a project called Say. Uh, the simple way to think about say is uh, we only have one thesis and that's it um, and what you'll find as a style of myself the rest of the team the foundation is cut through as much of the noise in blockchain as crypto as possible and get to exactly what matters the most okay. um, so there's so much sort of hype so much so much fluff so many narratives that people spin and yeah. different points of excitement it's really difficult to cut through all of the excitement the noise, and really yeah. You know, what are the actual things that will push the industry mm -hmm. forward? Um, the simple thesis of say is we believe that the core value prop of all blockchains is just the exchange of digital assets. Absolutely. Like, period. That, that is it. So many other things that people can get excited yeah. about. But at the, at the end of the day, what ends up moving a big part of the industry is exchanging some kind of digital asset. It could be an NFT, yeah. it could be a DeFi token, it could be a gaming asset, uh, a real estate asset, it doesn't matter. It's exchanging some kind of asset. Absolutely. Um, then the question becomes, if you look at all of the successful apps so far in Web3, they all end up routing back to yeah, exchanging assets. Absolutely. They're either directly in exchange, or like OpenSea, Uniswap, uh, Blur, mm -hmm. all the centralized exchanges, mm -hmm. or it's indirectly in exchange, yeah. so like Metamask, Aave, the stable coin. Yeah. If people say stable coins have a lot of uh, product market fit. <laughs> yeah. Their product market fit is as a trading pair. It's like the thing that you sort of swap out of. So that's going to be the big, big problem that if Say's infrastructure is able to solve, mm. will unlock a huge, huge part of the industry. Um, so the easy way to think about the value prop is if you build any kind of decentralized app, mm. today the trade-off is insurmountable. Mm. Like if you wanted yeah. to build a decentralized exchange, the user experience difference between that and like Coinbase yeah. is, is a, like a laughing matter. It's like yeah. how big it is. Um, if Say is successful in solving this problem, there's no trade off. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what is it that Say Networks does that sort of differentiates you guys from the rest of the market? And you very rightly pointed out that a lot of what happens in the market is just hype or I like to call it noise. So, how do you uh, sort of separate from the noise and become music? Yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I'm, I'm going to use it in my next. Uh, <laughs> Hope you give me credit. Maybe my keynote. <laughs> Um, so I'd say that one of the big, biggest differentiators, and you don't need to hear this from me, uh, yeah. the best person to ask are the applications, the teams building on top of Say, like why did they choose to build Same. on Say's infrastructure versus Solana, Ethereum, yeah. any other piece of infrastructure that uh, they could spend time on? Um, I'd say the thing that has resonated the most with a lot of the founders, the applications building on Say, has been the honesty, the focus. Yeah. Um, when when people learn more about say it's not uh, what you'll find is a lot of other infrastructure will sort of tweak the the value prop to whoever yeah. they're speaking to you're speaking to a gaming project oh hey look we've uh, optimized all this stuff for gaming teams uh -huh. optimized it to be really good for nft teams the say value prop will ever be the exact same yeah this is the best infrastructure for exchanging assets Absolutely. And that's it uh, and the reality is the exchange of assets is so critical to every possible type of uh, of application web three. People, yeah. one of the common misconceptions of say is it's like a very finance kind of DeFi focused piece of infrastructure. Uh, but people don't quite realize that trading is general purpose. Uh, if you're building a game, if you're building an NFT, if you're building a social app, 
the exchange of assets is just as critical to that application as it is to a uh, broader DeFi. Yeah. You need to exchange the gaming assets. It's like a critical to the user experience. Absolutely. Decentralized finance has already evolved quite a bit, uh, despite the TVL falling from all time highs at this point. We do see a lot of hope in decentralized finance per se. Uh, what do you think are some of the greatest opportunities as well as challenges that uh, the sector will face as a well? whole? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I'd say the, one of the interesting things is that uh, myself, my team really like thinking about is the impact of innovators dilemma yeah. as it applies to not just crypto innovation, but innovation broadly. Yeah. So one classic example is the US and their adoption of mobile payments. Okay. Um, they've been much slower to adopt mobile payments as a country than India, than China. And a big reason for that is because the credit card infrastructure there almost works like two way. Mm. It's already built out. The, 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 the need to move to mobile is much yeah. lower because credit cards just work good enough. Just, just do the job. The same applies to broader crypto and DeFi adoption. Okay. Uh, what you'll find is adoption is very high in countries like Turkey, historically. Yeah. Uh, and that's partly because Turkey doesn't have as much as a, a mature built out financial infrastructure right. um, and system that the U.S. has. The U.S., the financial system almost works so well that yeah. the value pop of crypto becomes a little less pronounced versus for countries where they don't quite already have that advancement, um, the value pop becomes clearer. So ironically, it's, it's actually the advancement of uh, the existing financial system that makes it even harder to adopt something yeah. that uh, we all know works better. Hmm. Um, it's just the difficulty of uh, innovators. Absolutely. So uh, uh, talking about, say, network, what is it that uh, Say Network is trying to do in terms of the convergence of AI and blockchain? Because a lot of mainstream Web3 firms recently pivoted or uh, rebranded this themselves according to the recent hype around AI. Do you think that AI, the convergence of AI and blockchain is uh, one arena that will be talked about more? And do you see potential in that area? If so, uh, how is Say Network trying to sort of capitalize on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, speaking of noise, uh, yeah, we're, we are like <laughs> yeah. entering like the noisiest of, of uh, areas. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, the conversion between AI and blockchain is like fraught with just a lot of, a lot of random stuff, like a lot of narrative, a lot of things that I think have, have a lot of excitement but don't quite have as much of the substance. Um, I will try my best to cut through as much of that as possible. Um, so we can start with the very first principles. <laughs> Um, a simple way to think about AI is you are taking inputs, usually manual inputs. Okay. So that can be like existing articles online. Mm -hmm. It can be reinforcement learning. So yeah. you ask for an output, I give you an output, and then you give me feedback to say, oh, that one's wrong, maybe mm -hmm. tweak it a bit. Yeah. So it's actually quite manual, or like labeling data is very That's popular. Good. There's a huge company called Scale AI, whose core business mm -hmm. is labeling photos of, here's the cow, send it to the AI, yeah. uh, the autonomous driving vehicle companies. So it's taking manual inputs to make more automated outputs. A big value pop of Web3 and crypto generally has yeah. always been incentives. Mm -hmm. You see that happen time and time again in DeFi where an incentive thesis um, gets played out over the course of weeks. Yeah. Then we find out whether or not it works or it doesn't work and then they try it again. Yeah. That's where things get really interesting with AI. How do you incentivize people to provide the inputs needed to build these robust uh, production ready models. Um, to do the simple manual work as, of labeling photos, labeling data, labeling words. How do you incentivize people to do that with participation, with tokens, with ownership into the eventual end product? Uh, so that's probably the area that is most practical um, where you can kind of see step by step where the incentives start coming into place. Um, and that's where uh, a lot of the apps that we're excited about are spending time on say. Um, so where say ends up providing the most value is goes back straight to the same core value prop. How do you allow the exchange of those kind of tokens and digital assets yeah. that are used to incentivize manual behavior um, to uh, easily be exchanged? And that's going to drive more and more people to be incentivized to label simple data. So an easy example uh, is like a Web3 scale AI. Scale AI employs a huge labor force to label data, mm. or you can incentivize that same labor force okay. 
with ownership in the network with tokens. That's a, one of the easiest sort of low-hanging fruit that we're excited about. We're excited about funding. Um, we're excited mm-hmm. about helping make, make happen yeah. on Terra. Yeah. Uh, talking about funding, Web3 entrepreneurs face uh, quite a bit of issues when getting funding. What are your, let's say, three top most tips for <laughs> entrepreneurs uh, so that they can bag funding? So what, what should entrepreneurs basically focus on before they can actually go ahead and get funding from the market? Mm. Yeah. They should focus on. So, um, I'll start with the sort of role that uh, say Foundation, sort of how we like to help yeah. uh, some of the best founders that we work with. Uh, the core value prop of a layer one yeah. is being a publisher, mm-hmm. is the lens by which we view it as. The same way that Activision is a publisher in gaming. Yeah. It's like the two of us create a new game, we go to Activision. And they help distribute us to all of the game stops, all of the places, Steam, the places where people can download yeah. the game. Same in pharma. The two of us create a brand new sort of medicine. We go to Pfizer, they'll help distribute us mm. to all of the hospitals. Yeah. Same happens in crypto. Except the uh, question is who are the publishers in crypto? Yeah. Uh, broadly, there's two types uh, the centralized exchanges and layer ones or layer twos and yeah. bridges. The, all, all three of those kind of get lumped together. So, Today, who is the biggest publisher layer one? It's uh, Ethereum. Applications and founders build on Ethereum because they believe that Ethereum will help get them their first user base. Yeah. Uh, and that's true. That's where the biggest network effect is, where the users are, where a lot of the applications are. They are the publisher to be. Mm-hmm. So in order for say to provide the best infrastructure, that needs to be packaged along with being the best publisher. Founders and applications need to believe that if they build on top of, say, build with, say, infrastructure, they will offer the best user experience. They will have the best chance at acquiring their user base. And that gets to exactly what is needed uh, to raise funding today. Um, People, by and large, get too excited about the narrative when it comes to funding, the product idea. What really matters is, one, uh, the founders, the initial team, the core team, the people you hire, uh, the people who start that sort of project are second to none the most important contributor to success um so really spending time on building the relationship with your with your co-founder understanding the story of how you guys came together the trust that you guys have built i think is severely underrated the second uh is traction like the the few things that can really stand out above above all of the noise and all of the stories that we can we can spin for the rest of today um those are the only two things that really matter do you have any final words, uh, anything that you would like to say to our viewers, maybe about Web3 blockchain or just your time here? Yeah, I'd say uh, the, the core thing that we focus on is being the best growth partner, being the best publisher partner. So if you're working on anything exciting, anything crazy, anything that people don't believe that you will succeed on, that people think is a really bad idea, those tend to be some of the types of people, some of the bold entrepreneurs that we're most excited about. So when, um, our whole team tends to come from the Bay Area, from San Francisco. I was born and raised there. And some of the best stories of YC, of the Bay Area, is Airbnb. The, the folks where no one understood or really cared about what they were building. Those are the folks that we want to put all, our all into. So if you're working on anything crazy, anything unique, um, get in touch with our Stay team. Stay the place to be. Yeah, we'd love to meet. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with us. Appreciate the time. It was Thank a pleasure.